All right, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So this is a cover from Glitter Bomb. You guys probably saw the time lapse video I posted a few days ago, and I've had several people ask for uh, the original uh, real-time version, which I usually try to do both. I'll put up a time lapse and then also put up a uh, the real-time version, or at least I've done that most of the time lately. And uh, this was recorded quite a ways back uh, originally, so uh, I don't have it anymore. I, I lost it at some point, and it's my fault. So, uh, But it had several people ask for it, and so instead of having that, I figured the next best thing is just to kind of walk you guys through all the layers on this one, because I had some questions about that, and I'll explain why there's so many layers. And, and also, uh, if you go to, I put a link up here, is that showing up? Yeah. Uh, if you go to patreon.com slash kmr, uh, you'll actually be able to download uh, this particular uh, PSD file. So I think it's up there now. Yes, by the time you see this video, it will be there. <laughs> so, all right. So this is uh, covered by Sean Izaski. I hope I'm saying his last name right. This had a lot of layers because with covers, more often than not, at least in my experience, there tends to be, there's more tweaks and more feedback from the other creators. Typically, not all the time, but... You know, it, it's an important piece. Obviously, you want to grab the reader's eye on the shelf. And so there, there tends to be more things get adjusted after it's done with covers. And so I tried to use as much of a non-destructive process, as they call it, and, and make things easy to tweak and change. And that was kind of the point of having all this. And I'll kind of explain this as we go. So, all right. So let's turn some of this stuff off first. And we'll start at the beginning, all right, or as close to the beginning as possible. If I go all the way to the bottom couple of layers here, the, these layers are there as basically just a way to save selections. So I, I basically have uh, all of the cameras separated from the character in the background, and there's uh, the tentacles have their own uh, layers. So I could easily grab them, and uh, even after I've made all of my changes and tweaks, I can go back and just grab those and uh, work on those again, make any adjustments. And this is the uh, really the, the base colors layer, the one that just says colors. And I did some rendering on this. You guys can see uh, just this is all on one layer, just painted some of these tentacles. And that's uh, no, no trickery there. It's just straight painting with a brush on those layers. And I did do some light rendering. You can see on her face some of the shadows and things. I was actually kind of in the process of, of figuring out how to do what I wanted to do with this. So I started doing some painting on this and then realized I wanted to paint this a little bit differently. So I ended up doing some other layers on top of that. So uh, let's see, this layer is really just that little bit of rim light there. Um, because, you know, from the light behind her, obviously, and uh, also a way to create a strong, you know, separation between her and the background. And, and, and what this layer is, if you're wondering, it's just a solid color adjustment layer, they call it. So if I wanted to make a new one, you just go down to the little uh, semicircle looking half moon thing and just choose solid color. And it doesn't matter what color it is. And it automatically creates a, a mask for that as well. So I just fill that with black and it all goes away. And the way masks work is you just paint with white and shades of gray. So I can go back now on the mask and I can paint with white or any shade of gray and it's easily changeable. So like if, if I, Let's say that the artist didn't like that yellow light there, you know. So if I delete this, let me delete get this out of the way. So if I go back to my little layer here, and he says, you know what, I really wish that was pink or something, which is silly, but let's do it. So I can just quickly double-click that layer, that color, change it, and it's done. I don't have to re-render anything. I don't have to make any selections. It's very fast and very easy. So that's why I chose to do it that way instead of painting on the character itself. Uh, this was basically just the main facial rendering from the, like the light from the front. Uh, again, it's just a uh, one of those color full uh, well, like solid color adjustment layers. So again, if I wanted it to be a bit more orange, if I wanted it to be red, or that doesn't look good, but you guys kind of get the idea. Um, I can change my rendering without actually having to change. Uh, actually re-render anything, which is, of course, very useful. 
There is a solid color adjustment layer on top of that in multiply mode, which you have to be very careful with multiply because it darkens, it only darkens. So you don't want to darken a base color that's too dark, otherwise you end up with muddy, messed up colors. And you guys have probably seen my video on how to avoid muddy colors, but if you haven't, look it up on the channel. There's a video on this. But uh, all it is basically, you can see, is just uh, uh, kind of a soft shadow on all the areas that are you know, the darkest parts of the image, obviously. And it's just a blue color. The other thing that I like using these layers is I'm, even though I've been doing this for, what is it, six years now, it's still trial and error for me sometimes for certain things. So let's say that I don't know exactly what I want that shadow color to be. I'll just start rendering sometimes on one of these layers and then after the fact start playing around with adjusting the actual color itself, which I know some pure artists out there are just cringing at you know that my vision is not that clear but uh but no i'm don't i'm not that good so uh, so sometimes i will start rendering something and then realize okay this is not really what i want i'll adjust that color and then keep going yeah i'm not above that <laughs> so what else do we have in here there's a couple of very very subtle little facial adjustments and lighting adjustments there uh, I just, uh, I can't remember why I put them on a separate layer, but I was probably tweaking it after the fact, if I remember right. So these are just layers for that. Um, this layer, actually, originally, I didn't do as much rendering on the cameras themselves. They were pretty flat, um, and that was by design. And But that was some of the feedback I got from the team was do a little bit more rendering on the cameras. And so uh, my thought process was, you know, less rendering on the cameras, more on her. But uh, obviously I was happy with the result of going back and uh, just tweaking the uh, rendering on the cameras. And I put it on a separate layer since that was a new adjustment and easy to fix there. All right, these are color lookup layers, which is sort of like adjustment layers. They're very, very subtle, I think, in this case. Um, you can see I've just, um, like this one kind of brightens things a bit. And this one adds some more contrast to the cameras. And so all of these are adjustments. And they're also, con I'm controlling what parts of the image are being adjusted with the mask, which you can alt click on that to see the areas that those things are individually impacting. So it's just a way to adjust parts of the image without having to adjust all of the image, if that makes sense. Let me give an example of that because that can be a little complex. So let's say I'm going to make I'm going to make a circle right here, and let's say for some reason, and this doesn't make any sense, but for some reason I want to adjust just this part of this image somehow. I want to make it more red. I want to make it brighter. I want to make it more contrasty. Whatever it is. So when you have something selected, whether you do usually you would do that by selecting the object, of course. But I can go down to my um, Again, click that little half moon symbol on the layers and let me make sure I'm in the right place. And let's say that I wanted to uh, adjust the color balance. Okay. So when I make a selection ahead of time before I create that mask, now it automatically masks off that part. So you can see that I can add red, I can take, you know, add cyan or whatever, and there's all sorts of ways to mix all this stuff up, of course. But that's just one example of one type of um, you know, adjustment layer. Obviously, there are tons and tons of those types of layers. And you know, like levels, for example, um, you wanna brighten that part or you wanna add more saturation or whatever it is that you're messing around with there. Uh, it's a very powerful tool to be able to tweak things after the fact and control which parts are being tweaked uh, there. All right, inks, that's just inks. That's simple enough. Um, my uh, color holds, which on this, what did I do color holds on this? Where did I do them? I don't know if I ended up doing any. Oh, I did in the background a bit, I think. I can't even remember. Maybe I didn't even use it, <laughs> but uh, it's there. Uh, now, originally this piece the lighting in the background looked like this. And all of the lights were the same color for the most part. They were all that orange color. And that was the second tweak that was requested uh, was to 
let's mix up the lights, different colors, which makes sense. So I just duplicated that layer, literally just put a lasso around the lights and then changed the saturation and brightness and all that. So I really didn't have to do any new rendering or anything. So that's what it ended up looking like was, uh, was that. And that's why this other layer is hidden because that's the original. But I left it in there just in case. And the one on top is just a little, is just a brighter highlight in the middle of some of those toward the center. Anyway, I know this is not the equivalent of watching me do this in real time, but I, I did hope you guys enjoy it. At least you get some idea about all this mess it is over here. Most pages don't have this many layers because interiors, uh, it's a little bit simpler and I'm not doing those kind of adjustments that often. So uh, be sure if you want this actual PSD file, be sure to go to Patreon and check that out. And I think that's it. We will see you guys in the next one. Take care.